Hati. Its natural beauty inspires wonder, but beneath its veneer is an empire divided. Away from the squabbles of the Egyptians and the chaos of the Canaanites, the Hittites have their own trials and tribulations to pass through, as they also try to survive the collapse of the Bronze Age and invaders from foreign lands. Whether you choose to command the great king or take on the role of the stag god reborn, will you bring glory to Hati in their darkest hour? Before we begin, a quick note. If the colors on the UI look different, that's because I'm using the Deuteronopic colorblind settings. Right, with the groundwork laid down, let's look at the Hittite factions. The leaders of the Hittites you'll take command of in Total War Pharaoh have similar goals, but very different paths and mindsets. In the capital, Hattusa, Shupiluliuma stands as great king over a crumbling court. Surrounded by foes who would take any chance to destroy him, the great king holds the pieces of the Hittite Empire together and will defend it to the last, to ensure his people's safety and his empire's glory. Meanwhile, in Tahuntasa, the hunt begins. Kurunta, a leader who shares the name with the stank god, sees himself as their new avatar and has started his cruel reign. Tracking those he considers his rivals, he intends to grow in power, take the Hittite Empire for his own, and inflict misery upon those who would dare stand against him. The leaders of the Hittite factions embody the exact opposites in one another when it comes to both their ethics and their playstyles. Shapiluliuma's goal is to rebuild and defend the honor of the Hittite kingdom. As such, he is a very defensive character, which is embodied both in terms of how he plays on the campaign map and with his armies, which we'll cover later in the video. These principles are also covered in the titles he can gain, and in his starting worship to the Hittite god, Arina. With the fractured nature of the Hittites, Shabiluliuma's unique buildings are about increasing the happiness and morale of his people, keeping them defended with stalwart garrisons, while also ensuring his armies are maintained. The people are seen to with buildings like the Safe Haven, which increases happiness, workforce growth, and food output. The garrison quarters, which provide happiness, influence, and the means with which to withhold sieges for longer, and the royal garrison palace provides happiness and influence, as well as additional ammunition for armies and strengthened morale for the inevitable sieges of rogue factions. Lastly for buildings, there is the army supply center, which improves melee defense, morale, and reduces the upkeep for armies within the region. Shapiluliuma's faction commands, a new feature we've added to Total War Pharaoh, also embodies his playstyle. As an active command, you can increase the replenishment of your armies, bringing them back to strength. If you wait for Shemsu Hor, your workforce will increase across every province held, benefiting rebuilding the kingdom. Kurunta, meanwhile, believes the kingdom is rightfully his. He's not focused on building people up but more on keeping them under heel and striking when they're at their lowest. His titles and play style lend well to stalking your opponents, undermining and debuffing them before conflict and within the courts, before eventually striking with unrelenting force in the honor of his namesake god. His unique buildings are about getting the best out of the native units of the land, whilst also affecting neighboring opponents' provinces, with little regard for the hits on influence. The military sabotage camp decreases enemy movement and melee attack strength in adjacent provinces, whilst increasing the raiding income of Kronta's armies in those affected lands. The mercenary hunting village bring experience to armies and food to the masses in provinces they're built in, as well as reducing upkeep at the cost of influence, as these are strangers making homes in these lands. The Mercenary Center improves recruitment rank, increases recruitment slots, and also brings legitimacy to Kuranta's name, but once again affects his influence as he extends the hand to those that other lands may deem madmen. His faction commands, when activated, grant increased income from raising, but he will not be able to colonize ruins. If left until Shemsu Hall, the morale of his enemies lower as they fear what his next actions may be. The native forces of Hati's land do not have to contend with the difficulties of fighting on sand, 
and instead must combat elements such as rain, fog, and storms. As such, they are normally found wearing much heavier armor than their Egyptian and Canaanite counterparts, and they specialize in fighting in the heavy rains, thunderstorms, and fogs of Anatolia. Two strong traits you can expect to see from the Hittite forces are Mistwalker, which allows units to traverse fog unseen, and Storm Warrior, with which units suffer less penalties when fighting in rain or thunderstorms. Less of a quick surgical force, and more a wall of nigh impenetrable bronze, the Hittites bring a whole different war of attrition to their lighter armored counterparts on the battlefield. In the highlands of Anatolia, the Anatolian, Caskian, and Phrygian tribes make their home, answering the call of the Great King. The lighter armored units in their ranks are capable enough, with high speed and skirmishing abilities, as well as being expendable. Being raiders, they're also good at causing chaos amongst enemy ranks, allowing the heavier units to eventually make their way in to deliver the final blow. Armored units, such as armored Anatolian spheres, are also very capable defensive units, ensuring the line is never broken. In the Anatolian lowlands, Anatolian troops mix with the forces from the Isua tribes. Sharing some units with their highland Anatolian brothers, the Isuan and Luwian forces bring lighter and medium armored forces into the fray. Isuan Axemen and renowned Isuan Axemen both bring excellent anti-shield combat to the fray, whilst lighter armor units can be utilized to try and thin enemy numbers, or at the very least harass the enemy before heavier units arrive. The major boon the forces of the Lowlands bring, however, is ranged infantry. A set of forces Corunta's unique guard do not harbor themselves. Finally, there are the forces of the Great King. Much like the Pharaoh Elite, these are the finest units the Hittite Kingdom brings. All units have the Storm Warrior trait, whilst also bearing the high experience and capability you would expect of the Great King's forces. Speaking of the Great King's forces, there's no time like the present to talk about each leader's unique faction units. Shubi Luriuma's forces are stalwart defenders. Adorned in heavy armor, they can weather whatever charge you throw at them, being some of the most hardy defenders in these lands. This doesn't mean he's without offensive capabilities, however. His archers can apply pressure to the enemy, harassing them into moving in on the main force. The spear chariots within his army as well can cause devastating blows to undefended missile lines. Combining these with infantry that are strong against shields and chariots, like veteran axemen and spearmen, and resistance to flanking, Chubby Luliuma's forces are the sudden dead stop to whatever the enemy throws at them. Corunta's unique offerings are more of a mixture than his counterpart's forces. Featuring a mix of different armor types and weapons, his forces stand ready for all kinds of melee combat. Hittite chargers, wielding great axes and wearing heavy armor, bring in devastating flanking attacks, while Kaskian warriors move with great speed, sowing chaos with their raiding abilities. Whilst Corunta's infantry choices are plenty, as mentioned earlier in the video, the only place he falls in is with ranged attacks. While he does have units of Kaskian chariots, which can skirmish and do also have decent speed, this can be seen as a drawback. But like any good hunter, Corunta knows this, and knows how to weaken the enemy and strike while they're down. These are the Hittite leaders, and their forces you'll be commanding in total war, Pharaoh. From the great king who'll do everything in his power to rebuild his home, to the usurping hunter, will take back the throne he believes is his, and he'll ensure everyone will bow. Their civil war has divided their lands, but who will rise up to the challenge, take the throne, and protect their empire from the enemies beyond their borders? Whether you rule with benevolence or fear, are you the great king who'll weather the storm?